when you're focusing on you and you are in a happy, elevated state, then you are well. You are, and then that is going to carry over, maybe even grow in your life um, through your own personal well being, but then others. Everybody, I'm Dr. Kristen Donnelly of Abbey Research. At Abbey Research, we deeply believe that curiosity can change the world because it's the only thing that ever really has. When we get curious about ourselves and others around us, we're able to understand the world a little bit better and move through it a little bit easier, honestly, with less assumptions about other people and more understanding and informed choice. And this series is in that spirit helping people understand each other better. It's called Welcome to My World. And I get the incredible privilege to chat to folks all over the world who are different than me, but just literally everybody, about something in their lives that we all should know a little bit better. And today's guest is no exception. I'm joined by Philip Mangan, who is the wellness wingman and helps overwhelmed women lose weight and regain control of their lives through daily personalized support. He's a model, commercial actor, environmental activist, certified personal trainer, and a fitness nutrition specialist that is so much, lots of hats. He's the founder of a holistic health and wellness coaching business that focuses on providing people with control, clarity, and confidence that they need to make the lasting changes in their lives. So Philip, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So let's just dive right in. Tell me a little bit about what got you into this work. Um, well, I, I can't say that I I kind of was like set on doing this all my life, but I think over time when you're open to letting life unfold, you see what aligns. And for me personally, um, I've always been big into health and wellness um, on some sort of level it, and it's grown throughout the years. So the more, it's, the more it grew, the more um, I kind of got to this point where I was like, wow, I've learned a lot over the years. And I want to kind of use this knowledge to help other people that might be in the same situation that I was in certain different points and times of my life um, to boost their health and wellness in general. I mean, I think um, a foundation of a happy, healthy life is your personal well wellness. And I think um, we overlook that with everything else going on in our lives. And, you know, how can, how can you really show up for yourself or even others in a greater way, whether it's, you know, your family or your job, if you're not taking care of yourself. That makes total sense. Now the word wellness is used for everything these days. So I'd love to know what's your definition of wellness. Um, well, my definition of wellness is, uh, I'd say a taking time for yourself and making sure that you're okay before you go and try to fix everything else in your life. And I think when you're focusing on you and you are in a happy, elevated state, then you are well. You are, and then that is going to carry over, maybe even grow in your life um, through your own personal well being, but then others. Yeah, it's a little bit like the oft mentioned airplane oxygen principle, right? Like if exactly. you don't, if you don't make sure you take care of yourself first. And we teach a lot at Abbey Research um, for anyone who's meeting me through Philip about unlearning exhaustion. Cause like we're so primed to think that if we're busy, it means we're important mm -hmm. and we have to kind of, that's a whole cultural unlearning. And I'm sure you hit that with your clients a lot. Oh yeah. I mean, I've, I've, that's the one thing I focus on first and foremost is uh, let me look at your sleep schedule. I mean, like, are you getting enough rest? Because say my, say a client approaches me and wants to lose weight or just get healthier. It all starts with having the energy to do that. If you're not getting the rest, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to show up to do the activities 
you're not going to feel, you know, confident in yourself because you're just going to be tired. So it is, um, it is the shift that I really try to focus on first and foremost with people. Um, but I've, I've had my own personal issue with that, you know, being in the modeling and acting industry and flying over and doing different jobs in the different spots. I hit a point like a couple of years ago where I just like hit a breakdown. I didn't even realize I was operating on this like fight or flight mode um, okay. until I slowed down. And I was able to start seeing things in a different way. And I was like, wow, no wonder something was off. Like I'm not giving myself the rest. You know, I'm, I'm still, I'm looking for that next high always, always, always. So now I've restructured my morning routine and something that I've used to help others, you know, do as well is, uh, you know, don't touch my phone for the first hour of the day, do something that's going to boost my mind and my body, a journal, you know, I do yoga or go for a run. And just start the day off on my own pace. And I think that's where, um, where everyone, you know, has trouble with is they pick up their phone first thing and they let the world in. But when you can kind of set yourself up to, you know, take care of you first, then it just changes your whole world. Absolutely. It's, it's so many thoughts on that. I know it's something I struggle with because I have to leave the house at around 630 to get Mm -hmm. to my office on time when I'm in my, um, I have, I have two hats in a way in our corporation. And when I'm at the corporate job here in Philly, the kind of the COO arm, I leave at 630 and getting up in time to like start slowly (laughs) would mean like four. And I'm not super into that idea. (laughs) So it's something that I'm, I'm really wrestling with when I'm home. How do I build in now when I'm in a hotel or I'm traveling or I'm at a speaking engagement or teaching engagement, usually those days start closer to eight. So mm. I can get up at five thirty or six and give myself that time. But the days where I have to commute in Philadelphia traffic for forty five minutes to an hour, it's much more difficult, and it's something I'm really wrestling with. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I think a lot of people struggle with that and balancing uh, families and work life. Um, it definitely. I mean, I am very thankful that I, you know, obviously, I think it spoke to me early that I wanted to. I value my time more than um, anything else, you know, okay. over money. So that's why I've made a lot of choices to do what I've done in my life. Yeah. So that I have that time. But I think for a lot of people, it doesn't have to be something that is as elaborate as what I do. I think it really just need it needs to be something where you are getting the rest first, first off. And then when you wake up rested, are you, do you have a little bit of time, whether it's 10 or 15 minutes to check in with you and how you're feeling? I think that's important because if you're not checking in with you, you're not going to know what's wrong or what needs to be corrected or anything like that. But when you kind of give yourself that little bit of grace period, that's when you can see where things are heading and what direction. And then you can either stop them before it builds up too much. Or if things are going well, let's keep doing this. Let's keep doing this. This is good. This is good. You know, so I think it's It's about taking that little bit of time wherever you can find it. I just happen to do the morning because I know I can do it. I can afford to do it. I think it's, we say that all the time when we work with inclusivity work and and other stuff, it's like pick one thing and do the one thing. And then when that one thing kind of works out, pick another thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's so important. I want to go back though to a statement that you made about, I didn't even realize I was in fight or flight until I stopped. Mm-hmm. And that's so common for folks. All the research on burnout talks about that. Like once we actually stop the stress cycle is when we realize like, holy shit, I've been doing this for too long. Mm-hmm. So in your client work, did you notice a real, um, I guess, uptick in that conversation when we were all forced to lock down? Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I agree. I think, um, I think a lot of people, and I think a lot of people were fighting it. You yeah. know, they were, they were fighting that, you know, they didn't want it to be this way. That's why everyone wanted to, to go back quickly, you know? And I think that's where it is. You, when you have time to sit with yourself and you don't know what to do with it, mm. um, it's very foreign. So you could either use it to your advantage and say, wow, that something's speaking to me, or you can try to just push, push it aside and say like, let's get back to normal. Let's get back to normal. So I think there's there was like a, a big balance in between the two people that are trying to do that. But I think a lot of people, um, they saw that's why I think why a lot of people don't want to do the community anymore to work yeah. that one. They want to work from home. They want to have that time because they see now that they had it, that there is a better way of doing it. And it, it is in a, a better, better way for your mind and for your body in general, just to be like, I don't have to go 
kill myself another two hours commuting back and forth, you know, in a car. I can yeah. do this from my desk. I can get up when I want. I can, you know, all those different things. So it, I think the pandemic, there's a lot of good things that happen from the pandemic, whether if it was up to you to open up to them if, if or not. You know, that's basically what I think. Totally fair. I mean, we're, we're seeing that a lot with the work from home. So my parent company is in manufacturing, so I can't, we can't work from home. Um, and so that's part of the, part of the process for us is um, like, you know, I can't make die from somebody else's property. Mm-hmm. So we're still, the commute is necessary. And so how do I then take that thing that I can't change mm-hmm. And shift my mindset around it and make allowances in other in other directions. Cause I'm hearing that from all of my colleagues in manufacturing, like where you can't. So we know now that we want to be home or we know now that we want to have different control of our schedule, but we make the things that make everybody else be able to stay home. Mm-hmm. And so how do we kind of do that? And so I think it's really interesting to have a, a mental conversation with yourself, which I'm sure you do with your clients about, okay, here are the constraints that you still have. Mm -hmm. And then here's how you work within them to take care of yourself. And that's so much harder to do than just blow open everything and spend an hour in yoga every morning. Yeah, no. (laughs) How do you work with what you've got to still, still take care of yourself in things you can't change? God, that's like, that's the hardest bit. Well, yeah. And I think, I think you, you hit it right on the nose there. Like, cause I think that that's a struggle that the majority of people have. Yeah. And, but I think the way it all starts is what is your goal? What is, mm, yeah. what, what is With the your intention goal? in mind? What yeah. do you really, if, yeah, yeah. If you have that, like, so when you told me like, oh, I don't really want to get up at four. Well, maybe you're not, maybe you don't have a strong enough goal that will get you up at four that will make you go to bed early enough to feel rested, to do the things that maybe you have in that hour that might boost you in a better world, like level. So I think it all starts with connecting with what you want most, because we can look at our restrictions as in, you know, and complain about them, but that doesn't necessarily, that's not our best use of energy. Yeah. We need, why don't we use our energy to really align with what we desire and then try to connect to it and fit the pieces in and move forward from there. So like, if I was to, if I was doing a job, like, so say, I don't, I'm sure you love your job. That's why it probably keeps you in it. Well, if I was doing a job, maybe that I didn't love so much and I wanted to get out of it and I saw this was preventing me from feeling my best, I would start putting the pieces in place to try to get out of that job because then, boom, I solved that problem. I don't have to worry about the commute anymore. And if that's what I value most, if, if I value most of having a job near me and I'm going to feel better because of that, because then I can do the things that I want to do with that time, then that that is obviously blatantly clear that's what you should try to do but i think most people don't really know what they want and if they do know what they want they don't know why they want it they either they want it because they think they they should have it because every all the little noises in our head from the outside world um i think that's that's a main thing it's there's very few people that i think are very very clear on what they want and why they want it and when they can do that then you see amazing things happen I think that's what it, where, where the, the, the line is crossed. When you, when you connect to it on that deeper level, you will do anything to get. Yeah, I think that's where we really start getting some of the high performance language that is happening now. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we need to always remember too is that high performance can mean productivity or high performance can mean inner productivity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really interesting. So many thoughts going through my mind. Um, <laughs> But what I'd love to know is specifically in your bio, you say that you work with women. So why, why women? Um, okay. Good question. I get that a lot. It's funny. Um, I really wanted to work with men to begin with, because I think men needed the, the type of coaching I was giving more. Um, I do a lot of, uh, emotionally connecting to what you, what I just explained, like connecting to why you want it and going deep and really being vulnerable and all this. Well, most men aren't ready for that, you know? And I think uh, I've been able to gain my emotional intelligence enough to be able to connect with women really well. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, also the women will bring in the men most likely. If I'm helping, you know, say, say I'm helping you and your husband 
is in need of help as well. And you're like, check out this guy. And it kind of opens up the door to that. So I think first and foremost, I think it was just because I think most women are more open. Yeah, we've been a little bit more culturally programmed to allow our feelings where men have been culturally programmed to deny their their feelings, Mm -hmm. every feeling but anger. That's the one we allow them to still um, to still experience. Um, but yeah, that makes total sense. I think it's, it's really interesting. Cause when I first read your bio, I was like, wow, that's really like, there's a lot of ways that people could read that. Oh yeah. And, and I so thought... it's really no, like, I, it was a way it was like, I really appreciated the like, Hey, I'm just calling this out. This is who I like to work with. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciated that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think the more specific you can get, the more it speaks to, to someone. It's not like I don't work with men. It's just like, if I'm, uh, saying I work with women, and then automatically, if a woman, you know, comes across my page and sees it, it's like, wow, he specifically works with women. And I, I might be able to feel comfortable in this because I, a lot of the coaching that I do, it, it, you really want to create this safe space. Like a yeah. lot of people open up on this emotional level that, you know, that is very, very vulnerable for them. So to mm-hmm. be, to be with someone that like kind of specifically really focuses on making sure he can create that environment, I think is really important. Yeah, I completely agree. I, and coaching is, is such a vulnerable thing anyway, like even, mm-hmm. even not personal body and health um, and health coaching, but coaching should be a vulnerable relationship because you should be open to mm-hmm. people calling you on your shit a little bit oh, and, yeah. and you should be open to that. So I think that's really important. Yeah, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta really get, get inside deep. If you're going to, you know, you want to go on a different path, you know, you have to be willing to go deep. That's the thing is because we've been, you know, like, it's, like you just said, it's like men has been culturally trained to be this way. Women have been. So it's like, how do we alter that? You got to go deep. You gotta, you gotta find the root. And then we, you know, we, we change that around. Fascinating. So I think I find that coaching is one of those professions that lots of people think they know what it is, Mm -hmm. but they may not really experience it. So for someone who's never been coached or is, is not really sure what it means, what do you wish we knew about your job? Um, well, first off, it's not a, I'm not your savior. (laughs) I think that's the best thing. Cause I've even looked at like coaches that I've had in the past is in like, in a, in a point in my life thinking like, wow, this person's really going to change everything. And then you don't think that you really have to do the work. Mm-hmm. Well, it's you doing the work. It's just like, I'm more of a guide. I am your support system. So like my, that's why I call myself the wellness wingman is I, I focus on being that support system for someone um, on a greater level than most coaches will. Like I'm, I want to be in it with you on a daily basis as in checking in and making sure you're sticking to what you're doing. So I'm a, sort of like an accountability coach in many ways, but I think most people don't realize that it's not, I'm not going to fix you. You're going to have to fix yourself. I'm just going to show you how to fix yourself. Mm. Yeah. I think I love, I love that. Cause I talk to a lot of coaches, especially on clubhouse, like clubhouse is lousy with coaches mm-hmm. and I can tell the ones that think that they're going to show up and fix people. It's like when I was in social work school, I could tell the people that wanted to show up to like save the world Mm -hmm. and it's great. And that's wonderful. And that's, and that's beautiful, but it's not going to work and you're going to burn out. And so you have to understand that this is just about support and, and providing tools in a certain way. Yeah. I think, I think most people, um, well, a lot of people want different things when it comes to a coach. And I think some people just want to be, they want someone to listen to them. Yeah. Um, and that's a, that's a, a start for them. Um, I get, I, I used to want to save the world and, and many different levels. And I was very intense into it. And I see, and then I noticed how I made my changes and it wasn't, it was no one, you know, making me, making me do that. It was really like that desire. I had to connect with the desire to make the change. So that's really yeah. what I am trying to help people do is open themselves up to connect with that desire. And then I'm going to help fuel them and to give them the confidence until they can just do it themselves. And it's on repeat because Mm. that's the problem is we, we give too much time and energy and thought um, of all these different things that we need to do. But when we can just make it a habit, then, and and you just make it, this is how, this is how I live. This is, and we're not talking about diets. This is not a diet. This is the way of living. If you want to, if you want to, you, cause you feel good. This is why you do it. Not because you think, Oh, I can't have that. You can have it. You choose not to have it because you feel better 
having this and you better about yourself when you have this, you know? Yeah. I love that. Okay. Final question. Cause I want to be honest, uh, honor your time and, uh, and our listeners, what is your favorite part about your job? Whew. Um, I love watching people grow and, and make these, like hit these aha moments and really kind of things click because when I see them making leaps, even if it's a small leap and many small leaps over time, that refuels me to, to continue my journey of self-growth. Um, so it is amazing to watch someone who came to you in you know, a state that maybe might be broken, might just need some tweaking, but then to watch them grow as a person right in front of my eyes, it's honestly a beautiful thing. It's, and, and I think that's what keeps me going. Cause I want to be like, it's like a high, almost. I want more of that. I want more of that. And it's like, I, and I, if that means like, Hey, I I'm being selfish. Cause I want, I want to share your high with you. Then so be it. But I mean, it's, I make everyone's journey, my journey as well. I want to, I want to, I want to be on that with you. So when you win, I win. So I feel that win. And it's just, it's an amazing thing that I can't really put into words past that. I think that's still really beautiful. Finding the joy in other people's joy, joining them in their yeah. journey as they find themselves. I think that's really, really lovely. Joy, joy creates more joy. So yeah. absolutely. is. That's one of like the laws of entropy, right? Like motion <laughs> creates more motion. Exactly. So exactly. I think that really works. Well, thank Philip, you. thank you so much for joining me. It's been an yeah. absolute delight. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and pals, listen, if you've enjoyed this conversation, I get to have a lot more like them. I'm silly privileged and you get to eavesdrop. So if you've enjoyed our conversation, make sure to like and subscribe to the Abbey Research channel so that you don't miss a single one of these conversations. Welcome to My World is not the only series that we have that encourages curiosity. You can also poke around in our Colonizers World Tour that talks a lot about the international community and countries we should know about, as well as pop culture coverage and more, helping you understand the world a little bit better. My name is Dr. Kristen Donnelly. My guest today has been the wellness wingman, Philip Mengen. And we, this conversation has been in Welcome to My World. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys.